الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين respected brothers and sisters to summarize our previous lectures to know the methodology of tafsir explanation and interpretation of holy quran i would like to say that divine law and revealed deen that is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if somebody will follow the commandments of allah and the practices of his prophets alayhim as-salawat wa taslimat he will become a human being and he would be considered as human being otherwise animal desire will prevail all over and therefore in holy quran and allah subhanahu wa taala talked about the people of makkah so he said ulai ka kal anham e bal hum azal they are just like beasts and wild but they but they are much more worse than wild and beasts why because their animal desires prevailed and controlled their life they were cutting each other they were killing each other they were humiliating each other and by doing so the person concerned will never be considered and counted as human being now regarding their deen their deen has certain sources we are from we will get the knowledge of deen and we will understand deen the first one that is holy quran the second one saying and practices of our holy prophet the third one unanimous decision or a decision agreed upon by the jurists and by the ulama of quran and sunnah which is called ijma and the fourth one that is a deduction or an ijtihad launched by a jurist of quran and sunnah so these are the four fundamental sources of islamic sharia now as we mentioned that holy quran is the first ever source of islamic law and islamic sharia therefore we are in need of two things now one to know briefly what deen is and the second one to know in which tone holy quran is talking about that deen and how holy quran guides us to the right path regarding deen it has certain branches therefore today i requested afsab to bring a board now that the it has four original branches number 1 that is belief and number 2 that is character and number 3 that is deeds and practices and number 4 that is called duty now 
this belief, as all of us as a Muslim, we do know and we recite, iman e mufassal, amantu billah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa liyawm al-akhir, wa al-qadr khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala, wa al-ba'si ba'd al-mawd. Believe in the entity of Allah, in the oneness of Allah, in the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the controlling authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then believe in the angels, a specific type of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does assign certain duties to be fulfilled and to be launched by. The third one, the messengers of Allah, the fourth one, the revealed books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fifth one, belief in taqdeer, only a little bit about taqdeer, that as you know, that here in this world, every one of us, he does plan, he makes projects to attain and to achieve his goals and his maqasid and objectives, but at the same time, regarding that very specific issue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own plan. Now, when there will be in conflict between your plan and the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ultimately the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevail. And that is called taqdeer. When we talk about taqdeer, so that is a confusing issue. But we could not explain it furthermore. Only to make you understand, we will say you plan a specific thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own planning regarding that very issue. Now, that is a very simple uh, 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 means concept regarding the deal. When there will be a dispute or a conflict between your planning and the planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what will be the ultimate result? Huh? What will be the result? <laughs> the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will prevail. It will get success. And that issue we call it taqdeer. Understand? They think will happen according to the taqdeer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That taqdeer is actually the taqdeer of Allah. That is actually the planning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number seven, wal baasibad al maut. Life after death, which is also logical. You will be driving there on the freeway. So either you will follow the laws and rules of the American government. So what will happen later on, after three, four years, when you will be in need of a new license or a new license card? So they will send it to you without asking you to go to any school and to have a test or examination. That is your reward. Why? Because your record is clear. Understand? But if you will violate again and again the rules and laws of the three way, what will happen to you? Not only that will deprive you of your license card. Your insurance will go up. Your record will become a worse one. Why? This is a punishment. So is the case of our deeds and our practices and our amal. Our accountability will take place on the day of judgment. So, if we have done something good, so we will get reward. If something bad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, there will be a severe punishment ultimately. That is something logical. That is something reasonable. Well, Basi Bad al Now, the second thing, that is character. So character, as I mentioned last time, that it has two branches. One is called Adal. And the second one is called Ihsan. To explain these two concepts of Holy Quran, in Allah Ya'muru, Bil Adli wal Ihsan. Adal means to give everyone his due rights and not to deprive anyone of his due rights. So that is called Adal. And the second one, that is Ahsan. Ahsan literally meaning to do goodness to someone. What type of goodness is meant here? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, you are in need of this piece of cloth. Means, if now this is my milkiya, 
I am the owner. My proprietary rights is prevailing there. But I am going to do ahsan with you by giving it to you free of cost. That is a type of noble character. And that type of practice is called ahsan. To feed someone, though you are not bound to feed, but to feed him, that is ahsan. To support someone, that is ahsan. And noble character, before getting message, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known through and introduced through those noble characters. As Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, narrated a lengthy hadith from Hazrat Aisha, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got the first ever message, when he was retreating there, he was in seclusion there in Jabal al-Nur, or Mount of Light or Light Mountain, there he was in a cow known by the name of Kahful Hira or Ghar Hira or Hira Kew. And Jibreel Amin came. Don't put the, the holy book on the carpet. That's not the holy book. Okay. So that's the book. Anyhow, you should give due respect to any book because knowledge is there. So, respected brothers and sisters, my submission was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Jibreel Amin came to him for the first time, in shape of a visible structure of human being. As he mentioned himself, is Ja'ani, Rajulun Bihira'a. A man came to me. So Jibreel Amin, he came to Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in shape of human body, or human structure. And he stood there in front of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the mouth and entrance of the cave of Hira. And he said to Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Iqra. Now the word Iqra literally means recite, read, learn. All the three meanings are meant by the word Iqra, read, recite, learn. Now, when someone who himself was an Arab, he will hear you that you are going to order him to recite or to read or to learn. So he needs no further explanation in this regard. He will either start reciting, reading or learning, or otherwise, he will say to you that, I cannot, I cannot recite, I cannot read, I cannot learn, because I am uneducated, I am illiterate. And a specific point here, I would like to mention, that every messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he got knowledge through wahi, not through education, you know. He got knowledge through wahi and revelation. It was a divine knowledge. That was not a knowledge which was taught to the person concerned by somebody else. So, in other words, every messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was direct student of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was not a student of somebody else. So now, you will easily find out that those who learned there in certain schools, in certain madaris, like, like, Ajahani, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, who himself, he was a student there in government school in subcontinent, and later on he claimed to be a messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, though he failed in class number five and in class number six twice. So, such a person can never be considered in the group of messengers, in the group of prophets, because every prophet of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is a direct student of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has never seen any teacher, any school, any madrasa, any book, any board, any pen. He was totally unaware of these kinds of things. But when Jibreel Amin came to, and he said, Iqra, though Jibreel Amin at that time, he did not mean him the meaning of Iqra to read or to recite or to learn. But, his message was, Iqra means, follow me in recitation of word Iqra. Is Hafiz Sahab, he teaches, Holy Quran, or the Qaeda, the basic rules and the pronunciation of alphabets to your children. So when Hafiz Sahab says, Alif, so the student concert, he follows him by reciting Alif, by pronouncing Alif. When Hafiz Sahab, he takes the child concern, or the, uh, or, or the kid concern to the Holy Quran, then he starts, Alhamdu. Now, Alhamdu means that all kinds of praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafiz sahab, 
does not ask the, 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 the student concerned to know the meaning of Alhamdu and then answer me in the same tone. Or if, or if Hafizah will teach your kids and your children Surah Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. So, he starts reciting Qul. Now, the meaning of Qul means say. Now, Hafizah does not mean and does not ask the student concerned that Qul, what should I say? He is not in a position to say something. No, Hafizah meant there, follow me in pronunciation of word Qul. So was the case of Jibreel I mean, when he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Iqra means follow me in recitation of Iqra. As I pronounce Iqra, so you should pronounce Iqra. But as you know, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, himself he was a Arab. And he was well aware of the meaning of Iqra, which means read, learn, and recite. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got the words literally in the meaning of recite, read, and learn. So he responded, Hazrat Jibreel, I mean, by saying, Ma ana I am uneducated, I am illiterate, I cannot recite, I cannot read, I cannot learn anything. Hazrat Jibreel, I mean, he got hold of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And pressed him to the best of his power once. And then he said, Iqra. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded in the same tone, Ma ana biqari. He, then he got hold of. For the third time, Jibreel Amin said, Iqra. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered in the same way, Ma ana biqari. He got hold of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the best of his power as he could do. Hatta balagha minni al-juhda. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hatta khashitu ala nafsi. I was very much afraid of my life that he is going to kill me. By squeezing me in such a way, he was going to kill me. And then he started reciting the first few ayat of Surah Al-Alaq. Iqra, Bismi rabbika al-lazhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq. By reciting these few ayat, which is started there by the word Iqra, we have got the bottom line that by saying Iqra, Jibreel Amin was ordering Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow me in pronunciation of Iqra, not to read and recite and learn something. Anyhow, that was a supplementary. Ahsan, Ahsan means to do someone, something from your own pocket. He has no any right. But you are going to do goodness with them. Now, character, it has two basic branches. One is called Adal, the second one is called Ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Holy Quran, In Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enjoying you people to, and He enjoins you people to administer justice to all and to do goodness to the creation of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there is the third branch. And third branch, that is deeds and practices. Regarding deeds and practices, you have two aspects of your life. Two aspects of your life. As you know, that a living human being, he is a combination of two things. One, his physical structure physical body, and a second element that is known by the name of ruh, spirit, and soul. To that ruh and spirit, we have got life. When that ruh will come out, our body would be called a dead body. It will get a title of a dead body. Nobody will say that he is a human being. We say, lash, jasad, dead body. The title changed totally. Why? Because ruh and spirit came out. Now, you have two relations. One is, or two aspects. One is your spiritual aspect. And second one, that is your physical or material aspect. As far as your spiritual aspect is concerned, your ruh is in need of to get satisfaction. How you will get satisfaction? By earning dollar, plenty of dollar like Bill Gates, for example. Huh? If you will get... For example, two billion dollars, you would be satisfied. Why the people here in USA, in Europe, those who have no any relation with divine law, with revealed being, they have millions of dollars. And most, most of the time, you are watching on TV, 
or somewhere in the print media that such and such person committed suicide. Why? Because he was unsatisfied with the life he had. Though dollars were there, luxurious cars were there, bungalows and palaces were there, everything was available. But all these things are related to your physical body, to your physical structure, to your material demand. As far as your spirit is concerned, it's needed something else. So how you will be satisfied as far as your spiritual life is concerned? You must get knowledge of revealed deen and divine law. You will be satisfied as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Holy Quran, Allazina amanu wa tatma'innu kulubuhum bi zikrillah. Allah, bi zikrillah tatma'innu kulub. Those who believe then, revealed law. وَتَقْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And dear hearts, get satisfaction with the remembrance of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembrance of Allah doesn't mean say Allah, Allah, Allah. Okay, that's good. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha. No, to follow the commandments of Allah. That is the actual remembrance of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ so you have two aspects. First aspect is relation with Allah. And the second one, relation to His creation. Now, in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have certain responsibilities. Or you have certain mandatory practices to be done by Every individual Muslim who believes in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are five in numbers. First, to declare that there is no God but only Allah. And Muhammad is the last and final prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By saying kalima or shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abuduhu wa rasuluh. Then, to perform your prayer five times a day. Then, to do fasting in the holy month of Ramadan, then to pay charity or zakat, and you are saving every year, every lunar year, not solar year. And the fifth one, to visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to perform certain rituals as hajj, and that is once in your lifetime, if you can afford it. Now, it will develop your relation and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is our natural and spiritual need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu Ittakullah Oh the believers be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have fear of Allah in your heart and mind and then wabtagu ilayhil asila or ilayhil wasila and try to get in touch with Allah and to get connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be close to Allah wasila means zariyatul taqarrub which can take you more and more close and nearer to Allah subhanahu regarding various messengers when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about their message in detail then Allah says ulaika allazina yadguna rabbahum yabtaguna ilayhil wasila that they are the people yadguna yadguna Yaduguna Rabbahum. They invoke their Lord by remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Calling and inviting the people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why they are doing so? Allah says, Yabtaguna ilayhi wasila. They want to be in touch with Allah. For example, when you are there in your salat, you are in touch with Allah. When you are talking about Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Bukhari narrated the hadith. Look at me. Imam Bukhari narrated a hadith. Hazrat Abu Huraira says, when any Muslim, he starts performing his prayer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a running commentary to Karubiyin angels. Karubiyin are much more closer angels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these closer angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does address them regarding every single individual Muslim when he is performing his prayer. And he says, when he recites, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his malaika, look at my slave and servant. He praised me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at my servant. Asna alayya abdi. He glorified me. When he says, Maliki yawmiddin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majjadani abdi. He expressed my exalted status and exalted form. 
And when he says, Iyya ka na'bud wa Iyya ka nasta'een, O oh Allah, only you we do worship and your support we do see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika that look at my servant. He is asking me but he is confessing and admitting that I do worship only you. So I will accept his ibadah and his worship. And he is seeking my support so I will support him certainly. Of course I will support him when he says, Ehdin as sirat al-mustaqeem. Oh Allah, guide us or establish us or keep us on the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his farishtas and malaikas, I will do it certainly. I will keep him on the right path, on the right way. Now it means that when you are going to perform your salat and prayer, you are in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore he is giving running commentary on your prayer. So regarding every specific ibadah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will get in touch with you will be in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is your relation to Allah. As far as relation to His creation is concerned. And basically by the creation here we meant the human being. Your fellow human being. Because, as you know, that basically all of us, we are animals. With due apology to all of us. Because we are a kind of animal. We, are, we have all those qualities with the animal has. We are living entities like animals. Understand? Uh, we are in need of food like animal, drinking animal, in need of shelter aboard like uh, animal, in need of spouses like animal to get some uh, means sexual satisfaction. So all these requirements are the requirements of the animal. The only distinction of human being is that human being is a social animal. He believes in sociology. That was what uh, Aristotle said. That. Human being, he is a social animal. Now, for our sociology, there are three basic things. One, how we will differentiate a human being from animal. Number one, look at me. We are in need of food, drink, shelter, and all these kind of things. You know that. Now, like animal, we are in need of all these kind of things. But... As human being, we do not eat everything. We try to have some hygienic food, to go to McDonald's or to Jack in the Box, for example, or to some halal food, or to a good type of restaurant, uh, for example. Huh? Why? Because we are social. So we are not taking these raw material as the donkey eats, as a bullock eats. As the lamb and sheep eat. No, we are trying to have some hygienic, pure, tasty, delicious food. As you are waiting for your delicious food now. You will have a dinner after this lecture. You are waiting for. Why? Because we are social animals. We are in need of some delicious food. That is one distinction, which is called Hubbul Jamali Wan Nafasa. It means that human being wants in his life beauty. What he wants? Beauty. Number two, number two, purity or purification. Number three, his requirements must be a hygienic one. That is one distinction. The second distinction that human beings, they are trying to find only physical needs and material needs. But as far as we have intellect, so we are trying to have some intellectual feeding also. Therefore, we are going to colleges, to schools, to universities, getting knowledge. These are our intellectual requirements. The, the, the animals, they don't have this type of intellectual. Have you ever seen any university of animals? Huh? Just tell me. Any university established by the animals for animals? No. The, that is something else that we are trying to establish a dog or pets university here in America. Because they are much more valuable and precious here in America than the human being. So therefore they are trying to teach them such and such thing and to means to make a will in this regard that my whole property must go after my death to my pet. Mr. So and so. Mr. So and so. Or to my son, even they call him his son. They call him his son or his daughter. Anyhow, as far as the basic concept of sociology is concerned, that is related only to the human being. The first distinction of human being from the animal is to avail beauty. To avail beauty or to avail means a hygienic type of food to fulfill his requirements, material or physical requirements. The second thing, intellectual requirement. And the third thing, 
based upon his physical requirement where he needs the beauty and to be in a hygienic form in an improved form or in a promoted form and so his intellectual requirement they try to make inventions to do ijadat to do invention and to do ijadat like forgetting some air they have invented this pen this tube this pen otherwise when we were students there in pakistan and you are also all of us when we were students there in elementary school so we huh? have you ever seen this this type of pen in your hand when you are elementary in elementary even in when you are in middle school no at that time you had some chart and a blackboard and at that time hey you had a takhti made of wood and then you have a column made of tree branches and put it there in the ink pot and then and this is black and here is black and this is black and ya subhanallah and therefore that was the basic philosophy why the government added to be in malaysia clause because that is in color similar to the ink and anyhow now there is a third distinction of the human being from the animal and that is called al ijad wa at taqlid al ijad mean invention those who have intellectual approach so they do invent something and those who don't have intellectual approach approach but their material and physical demands are there and they want to avail such kind of thing so they follow the inventors they follow the mujidin we could not invent this this fan but those who invented the fan at the same time we went to the store and we bought one that is taqlid that is to follow so is the case of your deen if you do not know you are deen very well as imam abu hanifa knows as shafi knows as ahmad ibn hanbal knows as imam malik knows our scholar of quran and sunna nowadays knows so you that is logical that is reasonable you have nothing but only to follow when the mufti sahab he gave fatwa you have nothing but only to follow you understand now the people who invented to reach in only one hour or less than one hour to san francisco if we will be driving the car we cannot reach in one hour you can reach no what we will do we will go to the airport and then we will take the aircraft that is invented by somebody else but we have the same need as the inventor had so we followed the inventor by taking a ticket from hafiz sahab and his agency and go to san francisco in one hour or in less than one hour that is a matter of taqlid therefore our ulama said that taqlid is wajib taqlid is wajib you have no any other way but only to follow the ulama of quran and sunna if you will say no taqlid has nothing to do with our life where from you will get knowledge do you know quran very well huh? i am asking you no do you know the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam can you differentiate between a sahih and the ifa hadith can you make any priority or tarjeeh between two hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while you do not know if you are in the position of hadith do you understand that is not an issue to say oh the hadith is narrated there by imam bukhari then what hadith narrated by imam bukhari or imam malik or imam muslim then what there are certain other hadith which is related by the teacher of imam bukhari who is much more reliable than imam bukhari like his like sheikh abdul rahman ad-darimi rahimahullah like sheikh abdul razak in his musannaf so if there is a conflict between the relation of a hadith related by sheikh abdul rahman ad-darimi in sunan ad-darimi and at the same time another hadith conflicted to that one related by imam bukhari what will be the actual position and the same so that is a field very well known to the scholars of quran and sunna and by scholar of quran and sunna with due apology to hafiz sahab i do not mean hafiz sahab i do not mean myself i do mean the mujtahidin those who have been given their talent by allah subhanahu wa taala naturally based upon their piety and their taqwa and also based upon their knowledge they got it so they have all the right to interpret they have all the right to explain they have all the right to put on issues on priorities and tarjihat that this hadith must be followed instead of that very hadith why because they have certain grounds these people they have certain why imam shafi rahimahullah he has given priority to that hadith and imam ahmad ibn hanbal rahmatullah alayhi to the other one while imam ahmad ibn hanbal he himself was the student of imam shafi shafi was the student of imam malik ibn anas and malik ibn anas he was student of imam abu hanifa rahimahullah imam bukhari he was student of ahmad ibn hanbal imam muslim he was student of imam bukhari sometimes 
our brothers and sisters, those who do not know Deen very well, though their intention is very good, sometimes your intention will be good, but your practice is bad. Your practice must be good and intention must be good at the same time. Understand? So, our brothers and sisters, they have very real, sincere intention, but they do not know. So sometimes they say, oh, the hadith is narrated by Imam Bukhari. So I tell them, brother, at the same time, hadith is narrated by Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari himself never followed this hadith. He is narrated because he is a muhaddis. And a duty of a muhaddis is only to collect the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To analyze the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is not job of the muhaddis, that is job of the faqih like Abu Hanifa, like Shafi, like Ahmad ibn Hanbal, like Imam Malik. Anyhow, that is another issue. But we were talking about deeds and practices. Officer, why these are not working? Uh, oh, how was it? Uh, okay. So now, so in this regard, I am your Muqallid. You are the Mujideen. You found out that why it is going so. So you found out you are the, the inventor in this regard, inventor of that concept. As that was your experience. And I was not knowing in this regard, therefore I, uh, I did your taqlid. I followed you. So in this regard, I am your Muqallid and you are to me just like Abu Hanifa in this regard. Anyhow, so these are deeds and practices. These deeds or practices has actual certain branches. First of all, are two branches. So first of all, we have in relation to Allah and in relation to human being. In relation to human being, number one, your family life. And when those people, when people, those who do not believe in family structure, in family life, in family relation, so they are in no need of learning all these kind of things. But we as a Muslim, we as social animals, and we as human beings, we are in need of our social norms. So first of all, our first ever unit in this regard is our family. How you will be with your children, how you will treat your parents. How you will be with your wife and your husband? How will be your relation to your brothers and sisters, to your uncle and aunties, to your niece and nephews? That is called family life. That is called family life, which is in detail prescribed by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his saying and practices. The second one, that is social life. And social life, like our businesses and transactions, we are going there to rob to use, to long drugs, to 7-Eleven, or to gas station, where we do purchase and they do sell. When you are a Muslim, and the person concerned who is standing there on the counter, he is also a Muslim. So what about your business and transaction? It has certain rules mentioned there by Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, Hazrat Umar, radiallahu ta'ala, he used to go to Bazaar every other or every third day in Medina al Munawwara going to this shopkeeper or storekeeper and asking him about certain issues in his business transaction. And when the person concerned was unaware, Hazrat Umar he sealed the store at the moment, locked it, and brought the person concerned to Masjid Nabawi, where Abu Huraira used to sit there and to talk about business and transaction in the light of Quran and Sunnah. Hazrat Umar was telling them, first of all, you must know what is halal and what is haram. Sometimes you will be unaware and at the same time you will be involving in haram business, in prohibited business. So, whenever Hazrat Umar examined them and they passed, Hazrat Umar gave them the, the key, they take it. Now, you should go to your store and just start. Anyhow, that is called social life. The third one, as you know, that when you will get involved in certain businesses, sometimes there will be a dispute a conflict, to slap each other, to get hold of each other. There will be a bloodshed, injuries, killing, and all these things. There must be a controlling authority to control the society. To control the society, not to fight each other, not to snatch anyone of his due rights of his property, or anything else. So, you are in need of state and government. State. 
and government. When you establish state and government, your state must be established in the light of Quran and Sunnah. That was Muhammad when he emigrated to Medina al Munawwara. He established the first ever Islamic state upon 276 square miles. How much? 276. And only in 10 years. How much? 10 years. That state was expanded to 1 million square miles. Up to the lifetime of Hadrat Umar, that was extended and expanded up to more than 2 million square miles. And in the life of Hadrat Muawiyah, Hadrat Osman, Hadrat Ali, and Hadrat Muawiyah, Razi Allah Ta'ala, that was more than 7 million square miles. 7 million square miles. So, you are in need of establishing a state for Muslim where they can practice their deen easily, not in their personal life, no, in their plural life, means social one, means political one, means international one. Now, when you establish a state, that state is in need of establishment of a government. You must have a structure of your government, and that government in Islam, it has three branches. Number one, that is called legislature, or muqannina. In Arabic, they call it muqannina. And number two, <coughs> executive. They call it intizamiya. And number three, that is called judicial. That's called judiciary. Now, when you establish the state and government, then you are in need of relation with other states because you cannot live in isolation. A state cannot remain in isolation, especially now when the whole world has become just like a global village. So you are in need of establishment of your relation with Muslim and non-Muslim states all over the world. You must be in relation with them. You are in need of businesses. You are in need of safarat and uh, uh, embassies and something like that. So dear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear. La tattakhidu aduwi wa aduakum awliya. In other ayat Allah said, min dun il mu'mineen. In other ayat said, min dun illah. You must have relation with non-Muslim state. But there are two conditions. Your relation with non-Muslim may not be on the cost of Allah or on the cost of Islam and Muslim. Whenever your relation will go otherwise, so that will be prohibited. And until and unless that does not go otherwise, so that is allowed. Now this holy book, Al-Quran al kareem that is the basic source of that Islamic Sharia. So inshallah, we will start today and then uh, we will make a dua and next time we will give you further detail in this regard that how Quran is talking about all these kinds of things. So today we will start inshallah only for Barakah, Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha. Regarding Surah Al-Fatiha, some of the ulama and the sahaba, they are of the view that this is the only surah sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once in Mecca and once in Medina. Only to show the importance of this surah, Surah Al-Fatiha. Therefore, you can easily find in some masahib or Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha Makkiyah, in some of the masahib, Surah Al-Fatiha Madaniyah. Why that difference is? Because those who believed in the second revelation, they have given it the title of Madaniya, that after Hijrah. And those who have got the first ever hadith, they said Makkiya. Anyhow, for the first time, this surah revealed to Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was in Mecca. That is not the first ever surah as far as its revelation is concerned. Because as you know, then when Rasulullah sallallahu was there in Ghar Hira, or in Cave of Hira, so he got the few ayat of surah Al-Halaq, Iqra. بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم later on after two and a half year and less than three years because for less than three years the wahi was seized he never seen Jibreel Amin after surah uh, the few ayat of surah al-alaq for two and a half year or more than that anyhow when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was coming back once after two and a half year so he says فَنُوْدِيْتُ مِنَ السَّمَا Imam Bukhari narrated the hadith فَنُوْدِيْتُ مِنَ السَّمَا From the space I heard somebody is calling me Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says فَرَفَعْتُ بَصَرِي إِلَى السَّمَا فَإِذَنْ أَنَا بِالْمَلَكِ الَّذِي جَاءَنِي بِحِرَاءَ جَالِسٍ عَلَى كُرْسِينَ بَيْنَ السَّمَا وَالْأَرْضِ Jibreel Amin Our dead angel Who came to me 
when I was there in Kewa Thera, some two and a half years ago, he was sitting there on a kursi, on a chair, in between the earth and the sky, the earth and the heaven. He was sitting there in the space. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, Ya subhanallah, I recall by mind, when he got hold of me three times there, some two and a half years, and when I recalled my mind, so I became afraid of, and then I hurried to my house, that now once again he will come, and this time he will never leave me alive, he will kill me. So when I came, and I was recalling my mind, what's going on? So I asked Hazrat Khadija, رضي الله تعالى عنها زميلوني, 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 wrapped it in, in a blanket, because I am feeling cold. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was raped there in the blanket. Jibreel Amin came there to the blanket. Ya ayyuhal muddassib. Oh, the raped one. Oh, the enveloped one in the blanket. Come, stand up. Fa'anzir. Inform the people. Inform the people about the message of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa rabbaka fakabbir. And tell them about the takibriya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because these people, they have undermined Allah. By getting involved in worship of certain idols, they are going to undermine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَسِيَابَكَ فَطَحِرْ And then, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadrat said, that I have never seen the beard of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam unorganized. I have never seen the hair of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam unorganized. Every time, whenever I see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was combed in a proper way. His, ya yeah, subhanallah. So, he was our role model. We must follow the practices of Rasulullah. So, Surah Al-Fatiha, that is not the first ever revelation. The first ever Surah that is, but that is not the first ever revelation. Because before Fatiha, Ayat of Surah Alaq came to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayat of Surah Al-Mudassir came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after that, Surah Al-Fatiha was revealed. So that is the first ever Surah, but not the first ever revelation. Why? Hazrat Osman r.a. put it in the very beginning. He should have put Ayat of Surah Al-Halaq in the beginning. And Ayat of Surah Al-Mudassir in the beginning. Because whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got wahi from Jibreel Amin. So he was told by Jibreel, I mean, that these ayat are of such and such surah. And that surah must be put before that surah and after that surah. That is the actual order with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bal huwa Qur'anum majidun. Fi lawhim mahfuz. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has a sacred disk there. What he has? That is a disk or that is a CD or that is a sacred tablet. Second board, dear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said a protected board. Protected our second board means where the Holy Quran is in a written shape. So that is not in written shape. If you will, if you will, um, mean, if you will take out the disk of a computer, RFCD, you will never see anything written there. Anything. Therefore, the Mufassirin, they have said, Bal huwa Quranum majidun fi That is in sacred tablets. That CD or that disc is that small and the whole Quran is written there or fed there into that CD or that tablet and that is called the Lohim of Fool. Now, whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslim community, they were in need of certain instructions from, from Allah or certain rules from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Jibreel Amin, they take such and such ayat from such and such surah and take it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tell him that you should put these ayat after those ayat of that and that surah and you must put in order that surah after that and before that. All these things were mentioned by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered them. That surah fatiha that is the beginning of Holy Quran. Otherwise, that was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after surah al-alaq and after surah al-mudassir. So Hazrat Osman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he wrote the Holy Quran in the proper order being taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, its name is surah al-fatiha. Otherwise, its name should have been surah al-salisa because that was the third revelation. That was not the first one. So why it got the title of Surah Al-Fatiha? Fatiha means the opening. That is not the opening. That was third in number. Before that, the ayat of Surah Al-Halaq came to Rasulullah. Ayat of Surah Mudassir came to Rasulullah. So it should have been titled by Surah As-Salisa. The third one. No. 
to according to Allah or near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mahfuz that is in the beginning so that was given the title of surah al-fatiha now surah al-fatiha has more than 20 names we cannot give any name to any surah some surah they have only one name some surah they have two or three names only surah al-fatiha it has more than 20 names and every name has been given to the surah concerned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that one name of this surah is surah al-fatiha another one that is surah al-kanz the third one surah al-wafiyah surah al-kafiyah surah al-shifa surah al-shafiyah surah al-sab'u al-masani surah al-quran al-azim surah al-ruqya surah al-dua surah al-ta'lim al-mas'ala surah al-suwal surah al-hamad more than 20 names has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that very surah why? Because that is very inclusive surah, very comprehensive surah as far as the subjects of Holy Quran is concerned. So inshallah, next time we will, in proper way, we will start explanation and interpretation of surah al-Fatiha because today we were making only a trek to take you to the trek and now we will push you and then you will be running on that very trek and you, it will take you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because to get in touch with Allah, that is the only way. It will take us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, we'll be going this way and that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the proper knowledge of Holy Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow the commandments of Allah and the practice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah. Rabbil alam. Anything else? Yes, we are here to get knowledge, to seek knowledge. I'm writing a paper about on a religious standpoint of abortion, how women's rights and abortion are allowed. Yeah. 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 Their type of relation between male and female is something natural. When you will see a woman or a woman will look upon a male because both have their type of uh, attraction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the woman from this type of thing, therefore he has ordered that is not a tradition to put hijab and uh, to be far away from uh, the stranger woman. That is for the protection of her dignity and her respect. If something like that takes place, so in Islamic Sharia, there is a severe punishment known by the name of Had. And in this regard, Had is of two kinds for those who have committed zina. Those who have committed zina, adultery or fornication, they must be given that severe punishment by Islamic court, authentic court of Islamic law. And that punishment, if the person concerned is unmarried, so he would be given hundred lashes. And if he is a married one, and he could easily satisfy himself, satisfy, uh, satisfy himself sexually uh, there in his own house, but he has committed the same thing there illegally and un-Islamically violated the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rules of Holy Quran, so he must be stoned to death by the decision and decree of Islamic court of law. Why? Because he has violated the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time, he has injured and harmed the dignity and respect. The dignity and the respect of the woman concerned. But when that thing took place, abortion, before getting ruh involved in the body, you think? Ruh involved in the body, before that, which is four months, which is four months, that abortion is allowed. Even though some of the ulama, they allowed that abortion in shape of nikah also. If someone has some, some problem, so that type of abortion is allowed in nikah according to some ulama, not to me. I dislike it. I dislike it. You must protect yourself from the very beginning. Means not to put something there in the womb and not to have a child. So you have some utter pre preventives in this regard. That is something else. But when something went there, and it got shape of a human body. So that is a dislike practice to 
uh, do abortion. But as far as your case is concerned, which is case of adultery and fornication, so before getting ruh in that material uh, physical structure of the human body, which is there in the womb of the uh, woman concerned, that abortion is allowed because a person who is born of zina, yes, subhanallah, I'm not talking about uh, this society. I am talking about a, a honorable and respectable society. Dear, dear, that child will never get any type of respect. So therefore the ulama says that before ruh, that abortion is allowed in case of zina. But when the ruh is involved there, and after that, if the abortion will take place, that is killing, and that is just like murder, and murder is to be punished severely in the Islamic court of law. Yes. Yeah, the same thing. In Islam, there is no any difference between rape and fornication and adultery. Understand? Because there is, uh, there is only in Western world or in Western law. That, that is with consent or force by, by force. If that is by force, that is a crime. If that is with consent, no, if that is with consent or by force, that is a crime in Sharia. In Islamic law, that is a crime in Sharia. And yes. That is the basic concept in all the revealed religion, Christianity, the Judaism, and also the Islam. And therefore, Allah said, "Wala tabarrajna tabarrujal jahiliya." You may not put yourself on display. If you will put yourself on display to the woman, what will happen? These things will take place. Sometimes forcibly, sometimes by, uh, by free consent. Anyhow, uh, as Hafiz uh, said one thing, that after how many months the ruh is, 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 is put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the human body, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said in this regard as Imam Bukhari Imam Tirmizi both narrated a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, for the first 40 days, for the first 40 days after sexual intercourse, that material is in shape of nutfa. Nutfa means zygote, the mix the water of male and female. Then after uh, 40 days, it is transformed in shape of frozen blood. That is in shape of which is called the halaka. And then after 40 days, that is converted and transformed in shape of muzra, mean a humanly body, but that is just like a flesh of meat. And that is four months, and there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel, and he puts the ruh concern into that very body. So after four months, that is not allowed, that will be a murder, and that will be a killing, which is haram and sharia. We have a question here, but this should be answered by Okay. Yes. If a married woman who has small kids or infants is bound to perform Hajj, that Hajj is first for her, while she cannot take her kids to Hajj, please explain. Okay. If she has kids and she has nobody else to take care of her children, then she is excused for, 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 for a while or for a specific time until she kills come to such a state where, where, when she can leave them here in America and she can go for Hajj. But if she has, for example, her own mother or the mother of her husband who can take care of her children, who can take a good care of her children, means daddy and nanny or of khala or the auntie of the children, then she is bound to go and to perform Hajj. Yes, as far as for the hasana, if he is not a mohsir. Mohsir means that he's, he doesn't have any earning hand. And he has loan on his shoulder, lying for so many persons, that then he will be committing a sin if he will take care of the hasana to go to perform hajj, because he is not bound to perform hajj. He has no money. But a person who has earning hand, who has earning hand, but he has spent his money here and there and there and there, and next his future, he can get money because uh, he is getting a salary uh, of almost three or four thousand dollars. So he is bound 
to go and to perform Hajj, he can take Karbi Hasana from our Haji sir. I will give his reference. Or, or from our brother. Or from Hafiz Sahib. Even Hafiz Sahib is also a billionaire. So you can take um, Karbi Hasana from Hafiz Sahib. Or I will arrange for, inshallah. And later on, when you will come back, so on your first salary, you will give me my money back. That's enough. That's not the question. You can ask later on. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا عنا ولا تهنا وآسرنا ولا توسر علينا اللهم ربنا وفقنا أن نزور بيتك كل سنة اللهم ربنا وفقنا لما تحب وترضاه اللهم ربنا تقبل منا حجنا وعمرتنا وعن سائر المسلمين والمسلمات اللهم ربنا وفقهم لما تحب وترضاه اللهم ربنا وفقهم لما تحب وترضاه ما الله سبحانه وتعالى bless all of you ما الله سبحانه وتعالى bless your families ما الله سبحانه وتعالى give his mercy and have his mercy upon you people and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our iman and our aqeed in proper way and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow his commandments and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the proper way and true sense wa sallallahu wa ta'ala ala khair khalqi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi al-ma'in bi rahmatika 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 rahmatika